How can a conventional Christian who follows everything they've been taught in church in their life and believes that they will arrive in the spirit world into a place of love and light and to the arms of Jesus, cope with the shock of discovering their true soul condition and their actual growth in love and the error of the teachings they received? Yeah, this is an interesting question, Claire, because it sort of presupposes that a person, once they enter the spirit world, even reflects upon the difference between what they've promised and, and what they've ended up having. The reality is for the majority of people when they end up in the spirit world, they finish up with a experience that they end up having, but then they start justifying to themselves why they have that experience. So, so if we look at the average Christian's mm. passing. Now here I'm talking about a Christian who hasn't really had the heart religion touch them. Mm. Right? In yep. other words, they've, they've practiced the sort of rules and tenets mm. of their church. Um, they've rigidly followed what they believe is their interpretation of the Bible. But the love part of the religion's faith hasn't really touched their heart. So mm. that's the kind of person yes. I'm talking about now. When they pass into the spirit world, they often, they often realise they are not in the arms of Jesus as mm. they were promised. They don't meet Jesus generally. And um, often they are in a place of semi-darkness or darkness in the spirit world. It depends how moral they've been as to mm. where they will be. They'll, if they've been quite moral on the earth, and they'll probably end up in the middle of the first sphere or near the top end of the first sphere of the spirit world. <clears throat> if they have been a little immoral or they've been judgmental or other kinds of emotions, which sometimes they feel induced to be because of their knowledge of what they believe is the truth, then they'll be... Usually a bit lower in the spirit world as a result. Now, if we if we look at where they arrive, so they arrive now in the spirit world, they realise they're not in the arms of Jesus, they're not in a, some kind of paradise condition that they expected, and some of them even do literally expect to be playing harps as mm. angels with Jesus mm. or whatever. And, uh, of course, I'd be pretty bored with that kind of behaviour every day, but <laughs> you know, they, they, they haven't considered that. But they pass into this location where it was nothing like they expected. Usually the very first thing that such a person does is begin to justify to themselves why they're not in the location they expect. They don't say to themselves, I'm in this location because uh, there was obviously a lack of love mm. or there's a lack of heart in my practices. They don't say that. They go, oh, there's something wrong with my practices or there's something wrong with what I've taught or or they'll go through other series of justifications like maybe I'm just in a temporary location. Maybe I need to do some extra things and I'll get into the location mm. that I've been promised. So they have all sorts of specific belief systems that would cause them to remain stagnant and to not accept that there is a major shock. In other words, the physical surroundings show them that something is wrong. Yeah. But because they can't emotionally and intellectually cope with the fact that something's wrong because they're not humble enough, they won't even let themselves be shocked. Wow. That's real denial. That is real denial. Mm. Yep. And you'll be surprised how many oh. people from all sorts of religious denominations arrive in the spirit world in that level of denial, oh. huge levels of denial. Now, it now will take some time between getting between this condition mm -hmm. of almost total denial that everything they've been promised hasn't worked out into a condition where they realise that the reason why it hasn't worked out is because the love part of the religion faith, of the religion does not touch their heart. Mm -hmm. And it's what happens in that time period, which is often a very long time period. It's usually the longest time period of a person's progress often. There's only one other time period generally as long, and, and that is the time period of when a person becomes satisfied of where they are. Right. So these two problems is the denial period of their, of their life and the self-satisfied period of their life are the two primary causes of lack of progression, both on earth and in the spirit world. Mm. So usually a person in the spirit, who arrives in the spirit world arrives in one or both of those conditions. And as a result, it can take a long period of time before they even will admit to themselves that their own teachings that they imbibed on earth weren't satisfied and, were not, and did not come true. Mm. Now, 
that applies to the average person who passes from this earth to the spirit world. I do not classify a Christian who has a heart-based religion for love mm. as the average person. Mm -hmm. They are completely different to the average person, mm -hmm. as is the Muslim who has a heart-based yes. religion for love. Yes, He's completely different to the yes. average person as well. Because when you have love guiding your heart and soul, now you also have a semblance or, or, or at least a smidge generally of humility. Mm. And as a result, you can admit to yourself the shock of it's not how I expected. And then you begin to ask questions. Why isn't it how I expected? What happened to cause it to be not how I expected? And so forth. And as a result of these questions, you get to have the answers given mm. to you from mm. spirits who have already learnt the answers mm. to those questions. Mm. And so my suggestion to any person who passes into the spirit world where their expectations of the spirit world aren't the same as their actual location, and that is my feeling, they, all they need to assess, is what I expected it to be exactly what it is now. Yeah. And if it is not, have the humility to see that what you believed was obviously false mm. and there is some truth you need to imbibe and you need someone to tell you what that is. Yep. <laughs> someone yep. who knows to tell you what that is. And that's to me how is the best, is the best method of how to cope with the process of passing and any shock you may experience mm. in passing. Of course, to do that requires a, a certain amount of self-analysis. You need to be able to say to yourself, that's what I believed on earth and that didn't happen. That's what I believed on earth and that didn't happen either. And that's what I, what I thought on earth and it still didn't happen. <laughs> and, mm. and all of these things didn't happen. So something's wrong. Yeah. It requires some kind of self-analysis to be able to go, something's wrong. Now, the next step after that is the critical step. Realise something's wrong and then ask for assistance from somebody who's brighter than yourself mm. who might know the answers to those questions. Mm. The majority of people don't want to do that for all sorts of reasons. They don't want to admit that they, what they thought was wrong was actually wrong. They don't want to have the humility to change. They want to hold on to the false beliefs even though they are patently obvious that it is wrong based on the, you know, spirit, what, it was blatantly obvious in the spirit world often that something is wrong at, like, from their belief systems on earth. But they don't want to admit that to themselves. That's a lack of humility. Mm. And if we have a lack of humility, we're going to very much struggle in the spirit world mm. because we're not going to want external assistance. Mm. And if you don't want external assistance in the spirit world, you have no hope of progressing ever because the only type of assistance you will ever get is from a spirit or God, which are all external assistances. Yeah. So if we feel that we can resolve all the questions by ourselves within ourselves, we will be greatly mistaken mm. and uh, we will stay stagnant mm. for long periods of time mm. in the spirit world. Something incidental <laughs> that just came into my mind. Yep. Do you keep your guide when you pass? Yes, uh, yes. Your guide often remains with you after mm. you've passed, uh, depending on your condition, of course. Mm. If your condition is equal to your guide, then, of course, they're more like your friend than your guide. Yes. But if your condition is, is not as loving as your guide's condition, then your guide will continue to endeavour to, to guide you in the spirit okay. world. However, the majority of people who are Christian believe that if an angel of light comes to them and tells them something beyond the, what they have already learned in the Bible, mm. and in fact there is a scripture, of course, mm. in the Bible that says this, that they should reject them. Mm. So when their guide, their angel of light, comes to them, and says, I'm your guide, I've been with you all of your life, I know all of your life, they say, sorry, you must be of the devil. Yeah. The Bible talked to me about people like you, I'm going to not listen to you, get away from you, me, me, you worker of lawlessness, and they quote all these scriptures. And the poor spirit who's been looking after that person on earth all of their life um, has to walk away uh, and wait. And wait. Until the person who's, who's, who's passed mm. has the willingness to actually go, oh, maybe that person was my guide. Maybe there is such a thing as guides even. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe oh. I should ask him because mm. he's brighter than I. And remember what Jesus said about brightness, let your brightness shine mm. so it'd be brighter than me. Maybe, maybe I should have listened to him and then asked him back. 
but sometimes I've seen that happen 200 years after mm. and during that time that person on, who, who's passed uh, feels like they've got no one to guide them. Mm. But they're rejecting their own guide. Yeah. yeah. And that's a frequent occurrence, yeah. and particularly amongst Christians, mm. because Christians are told... Because of that. ...of these Bible mm. beliefs mm. that they imbibe while they're on earth and then when they pass, they remember them, of course. And they actually remember them more easily yeah. uh, because their mind is a lot clearer as yes. a result of the operations of the spirit body. They remember a lot of these quotations even more clearly than they did on earth. Mm. And then as a result of that, they decide to embrace that belief system, still trusting the Bible is God's word, but, but preventing them from further progression for, for a long periods of time. Mm. And it's usually only love that gets them out of that condition. When I say love, the love they have to want to connect to God, if it yes. exists, or the love, and, and more often it is, the love they have of wanting to connect to others, yes. other people. Um, and that love drives them to find out some things, some, find out some more truth. And then in finding out that more truth, they realise to them and so forth, are still available to them and so forth. But, but what they believe to be true is not true. So it's usually some kind of growth or expansion in their soul of love that causes them to have the awakening of their soul, as it were. So, you know, for the majority of people who pass, and particularly for the majority of Christians who pass, if, if love hasn't, hasn't been the governing factor of their practice of religion on earth, then love won't be the governing factor of their practice of religion in the spirit world. Mm -hmm. They'll arrive in a very dark condition as a result. Mm -hmm. And then as a result of that dark condition, it will only be a series of events that occur over a long period of time, generally, that causes them to re realise that love hasn't been the guiding factor in their life and it causes them to open their heart to love. And once their heart is open to love, then they start engaging progression mm -hmm. in a more rapid way. The, the problem in the spirit world is gaining the awakening. And gaining the awakening is all about humility or a lack of it. Yeah. And, uh, and it's the lack of humility that causes the inability to have an awakening. So, so again, as I say about the daily practices mm -hmm. that we mentioned in question two, I think it was, um, those daily practices will help us mm. not only now, but also after we pass. Yes, of course. Uh, to, gain, to gain this awakening mm. of our soul to the extent where we're willing to conceive things that we, that we have previously believed were true, but now which our life is demonstrating to us can't have been true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so my suggestion to the average person of any religious faith is when you find after you've passed that what you believed in your religious faith hasn't worked out to be true, then immediately say to yourself, all right, there's, there's things I need to learn and be humble enough to ask for help to learn. And when a brighter spirit comes to you, instead of dismissing them as an angel of the devil, <laughs> listen to them and learn from them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.